Hello and a warm welcome to today's show. Now market rates can vary depending on the development sector, especially in the property development area. We want to let you know what it means to value your land and just what steps you need to take with a land valuer. That's what we'll be talking about later on in today's show. But for now, let's have a look at what we have in the property of the week segment. La Casa is a Spanish word meaning a beautiful home. And just like its name, this house has an interesting architectural design with an expansive exterior. Built using the modern EPS technology, the estate is designed to cater for buyers who do not compromise on style and luxurious living. An extremely wide decorative front door sets the tone with style and elegance. Multiple focal points characterize the space, blurring the line between architecture and art. A strong fashion statement, this accent wall brings all of the room's characteristics together in a way that is artistically pleasing. Wall brackets complement this full moon sconce sitting on the ceiling. Cabling for TV, DVD and decoder has already been done. The open plan kitchen is well designed and will allow you to move effortlessly throughout the space. It's fitted with a modern two-tier kitchen island that is functional and aesthetically pleasing. Apart from the added counter space, added storage space and an extra sitting space, you can place food appetizers on the upper level while using the lower level as a food prep area. Soft touch cabinets and drawers come in convenient hydraulic and pull out designs. The double sink is very useful as it allows you to fill up one side of the sink with hot water to wash dishes so that you can rinse them in the other. This console table adds balance to the space and can be used to hold small items like car keys, cell phones and family photos. In the shared bathroom, beautiful ceramic tiles adorn the walls. The spare bedroom is spacious with inbuilt floor-to-ceiling MDF wardrobes which do not extend out into the bedroom, making it possible to utilize wall space which would otherwise have been wasted. The master bedroom is stylish. This window lets in plenty of natural light. The wardrobes are outfitted with a substantial range of internal storage solutions to cater for whatever you will need to store. The master closet, ceramic tiles adorn the walls, giving it visual emphasis while adding a decorative touch. Accessories include mirrors, towel rails, soap and toothbrush holders. Water is from three different supply lines and there is plenty in storage with a 110,000 litre underground tank. 
electricity is prepaid and each unit comes with one parking slot. Shared amenities include a children's playground and a rooftop recreation area. Security is high level with a 24-hour manned gate, perimeter wall with electric fencing and a police station barely 150 meters from the property. La Casa is a prime gated community comprising of 21 bedroom and 28 two bedroom units. The two bedroom unit is 5.7 million while the one bedroom unit is 4.4 million. It doesn't really have to be hard to find that one thing that brings the accent to your home. Today on our Property Essential segment, we show you how to use decorative stones. Ever found it hard to look for decorative materials for your home? Well, today we give you ideas of materials that are literally lying under your feet. New ideas come to mind when we try to imagine inexpensive, beautiful ways to enhance our household and they include natural materials such as stones. All beautiful, all natural are these unique compositions throughout the design line. To begin with, stones can be laid on top of the soil in a flower pot, especially important in dry, hot areas. Such a decoration not only pleases the eye, but also saves the soil from excessive drying by evaporation from the soil surface. Pick up those stones outside your home, lay them up on the dining table mats and you have your beautifully stone designed table mat that will not damage the surfaces. Another very stylish interior is decorating a wooden frame mirror with stones of different sizes. These stones give a great natural accent, making the designs look spectacular and exclusive. Stones of different sizes can also be used together with seashells and very fine rock dust to fill the space between the larger stones. Stones that we loved to collect as children can not only become a decoration of everyday household items but even finishing material in the decoration of the kitchen and bathroom. They can be used anywhere with different themes. They can be used in the backyard landscape, suitable for customization of fireplaces, Rocks in small quantities can also add a spa-like atmosphere to a regular bathroom. Can be used as a rug for the threshold or bathroom. This mat will be a natural massager as it stimulates active zones on the feet that have a positive health impact. A simple photo frame of stones and wire would be a great reminder of a wonderful vacation. Decorative stones can be used for various themes. Here we have a bedroom theme and they've been used on these beautiful lampshades. These stones come in different sizes and shapes and you can color them whatever color you may like, whether greens or browns or even gray, depending on what you find fit. Some of the advantages of decorative stones include they give a natural look and an earthy feel, are eco-friendly,
They always look interesting and not boring at all, have a beautiful and rich texture, are highly durable so require little or no maintenance at all if assembled correctly from the very beginning. Whether in your home or in your garden, stones can truly bring an earthly feel to your home. Time for us to take a short commercial break, but we'll be back with more. Welcome back to the show. When you look at property valuation, the pricing can be different at different times. But how do you get to know how to value your property and what is the downside of not engaging in a valuer? With us is Eunice Masharia, who is a valuation expert and the deputy chair at the Institution of Surveyors in Kenya, and she will answer all these questions. Karibu sana. Thank you. Many people would wonder, why do you need a valuer? You need a valuation, one, when you are taking a mortgage. Uh, that's mainly why people would come to take a valuation, because the bank will ask you to do a valuation, to use it as a collateral for the mortgage. You need a valuation when you're doing insurance cover for your property. You need a valuation when you are buying or you are selling a property. You need to know the actual value or the actual worth of your property when you're doing insurance. And for many other purposes, including uh, statutory valuations, like for rates, capital gains tax. Now, when you're doing your returns, when you're selling a property, you need a valuation for that. You need a valuation when you're doing stamp duty when you're transferring a property. You need a valuation just to know the worth of your property. That's right. Yes. And with that, I'd like you to take us through the process of valuation, just the basic uh, process. When we look at different things on the, on, the, on the property, first of all is to identify the property. So we need to actually come to the site and look at the location of your property. We need to buy the relevant maps for your property so that you're able to identify it. Sometimes you also cross check with the GIS, you also check with um, Google Maps, just to confirm that the property exists, first of all, on the ground. Uh, the second one is that you do a search and confirm the ownership details of your property. Who is it registered in? Is the property a leasehold? Is it a freehold? Uh, if it's a leasehold, what is the term of the lease? You see, some have 99 years, uh, maybe it has expired like six years or 10 years. So what is the remaining term of your, the lease of your property? We also check the developments on your property. Is it built or is it uh, vacant? If there are developments, then we'll get into the details of the developments. We'll measure, we'll look at the maps, we'll look at has it been approved? Uh, are the maps approved? Are the plans approved? Um, so we check whether there are any other things like uh, where you live on your property, maybe there is something that is passing over power cables or sewer lines, etc. We we'll look at the environment, is it conducive for the type of use that you have put it into. We also look at the future, does it have potential, is it maximus, do you have you maximize the use of your property. For example, you go to a property and find, say in Kirimani, you might go there and find a bungalow on a half an acre, yet the neighbors, all of them have put up, you know, big development, multi-story developments. So your property cannot fetch the same value with your neighbors because your neighbors have maximized the use of their property. Are there any specific considerations when you look at market value in terms of valuation? Yes, we look at, uh, we have several approaches to valuation. We could look at the market approach, where we are looking at uh, what are the comparable sales 
have there been any recorded sales in that neighborhood? Um, <clears throat> then you see, how do they compare with your, this specific property of yours? Um, then we look also at um, maybe the development cost for your property. If you are putting up a building, what is the cost with the contractor's method of that? Um, we look at the contractor's method. How much will it cost you to put up that property? We look at the reinvestment value of your property. If you are to put down what you have and put it up, especially even for insurance, if the property was based down, say, unfortunate incidents of, say, a fire, what would it cost, you know, to reinstate it? We look at the, how much you are getting from the property, if it's an investment property. Is there rental income from the property? Then we will use those figures and spread them across and see what is actual investment. If, if I bought for investment value, I'm looking at an investment, how much does it give me over maybe a spread time or per period of time? Okay, I want to throw in a scenario where uh, per se there are two valuation experts and they bring in different market values to someone who wants to value probably their property. Mm -hmm. Why does that happen and what should someone do in case of such a scenario? Sometimes it's the purpose of the valuation. Why do I need a valuation? Like I've said, we can do valuation for different purposes and there are many purposes of valuation. So if one valuer is looking at a property from one angle, another one is looking at it from another angle for different purposes, then you might have different figures, uh, you know, returned uh, in valuation. Uh, sometimes, of course, um, it's just the time lapse. You know, someone would do a valuation today, another one would do it maybe two years down the line or a year down the line. Even six months sometimes make a lot of difference. Because if there's a new development in the the neighborhood that has come and someone was there a few months ago, then you find there is a difference in valuation. So is there a specific timeline in terms of when you should bring in a valuer or it depends? What would you think? Uh, not really because a valuation is, uh, is, 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 is as that date. The date that it is signed, it is, it is valid for that date. Because I, I'll give you a, a report, a valuation report and I'll date it and the valuation date, that's the date of the valuation. So if someone comes down the line three months and they find, for example, the railway is passing by or a new development has come forth, then that can, can change the figures. And of course, sometimes, you know, there's fraud, there's society, and so somebody has a different motivation for doing that. Or they are using vested interest to do the valuation. I, I mean, that, you know, borders on professional uh, uh, misconduct. But, but it does happen, so sometimes you might find that there are other factors outside the normal professional practice that might influence the, the valuation. What happens when you do not engage a valuer? Well, you learn the risk of um, sometimes overpaying on a property when you're not properly advised. You know, you might sell under the, the market price. Um, like any other professional advice, like a doctor, like a legal advice, is very important when you seek professional advice on valuation. It, it protects your property and your interest in that, so, in that property. So we are saying it's important to have a valuer, but then when, where, where do you get the best valuer? How do you go about that process? All the valuers that are registered in Kenya, um, uh, they are registered by the Valuers Registration Board. It's a board that registers valuers. And the risk of all the registered valuers is, 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 is um, at ISK you can get that risk, or with the board, the, the valuers registration board, you can get that listing. The list is um, gazetted every year. Uh, in the period, in the month of March, every year, this, the list comes up of all the registered valuers and uh, all the ones who are also licensed. Because you, after registration, you also have to renew your your license every year. Do you think anyone can afford to have valuation done for them when we look at for affordability? Let me say that you can't afford not to have a valuation done for so you. So it's not to have, <laughs> not about having it. It's not to have. You are protecting your interest in that in that in that property. Uh, for example, when you're, when you're doing your asset valuation for book purposes, you might over declare or under declare. So you might have a uh, wrong representation of your books just because you didn't engage a valuer. Uh, if you're buying a property, and you know property is not cheap. In fact, uh, it's, it's, it's in terms of millions and now we have gone to billions, you know, amounts of shillings. So say you, you, you even miss it by 10 million, 
the 100,000 or 200,000 or and the, that you had paid a value vis a vis your interest imagine losing 10 million just because you tried to avoid paying even 50,000 or 100,000 you know it doesn't make sense <laughs> yeah but even on the lower scale the minimum valuation fee is 15,000 surely we can afford that and is there a timeline of, of how long it takes or it also depends in your opinion we do engage with the government uh, ministry, the departments like uh, the, the registry to do evaluation, to do the search. We also have to get a map from the, the director of service or the district survey uh, offices. Sometimes it does, and, and also depending on the size of your property and the distance, if it's far, it takes time to travel. But if it's a local property, say in Nairobi, I think three to four days when you have everything, it works. It doesn't take long. Does valuation go hand in hand with survey? Are they? Do you yes. weigh them together? Yes, yes, yeah. Because survey is uh, it comes in when you're uh, identifying a property on the ground. You have to identify the beacons. Uh, you have to identify the location of that property, and we need a map which we normally will buy from the survey office. And in some instances, depending on the particular property that you're dealing with, you might have to engage a surveyor to come with you to the ground to identify the location the size of the property. Okay. Yeah. I want you to give advice to Kenyans who may not really have known so much about valuation of their property. And it's something you say, and indeed it's true that it's important to engage in this kind of service. I would like to tell Kenyans that just like you do a dental checkup on an annual basis, or you want to go to a doctor to tell you your health status, on an, when you're not feeling sick, even sometimes you just walk in and you want to tell him, just check me up, I want to know how I am. That is the same way with valuation. You can't afford not to know the value of your property, even if you're not doing anything with it. It's good that you know the value. And sometimes you know, you know valuation, like we said, is for many purposes. And sometimes it's even legal. You have court boards, whatever, uh, matrimonial property, you have succession cases. You know, if you don't know the value of that property, how can you even start you know, to, share, to share that? So it is very important that you know what you have and what it is worth. And of course, when you have a specific need for evaluation, you are more than welcome to come to us and we'll help you. You're truly an expert <laughs> in valuation. <laughs> Eunice Masharia, thank you so much uh, for being with us. Now you know that you have to value your land. Many people are worried that you may have to pay so much money, but you'd actually get to overpay when you don't value your land. That's where we end the show today. It would be great for you to talk to us on our social media platforms just in case you'd like to tell us of a topic you want us to cover. On Facebook, we are NTV Property Show and on Twitter, our handle is at NTV Property. We'll see you next Sunday. <laughs>